This is your brother Bishop of Bishop Zone TV. And ooh, we got to talk about this because I covered this topic months ago and I got some backlash, expected backlash from some black men who participate in the passport bro lifestyle. And I specifically talked about this individual, which he goes by the name of Austin Holloman. But I, 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 I called this man out on how he views black women in America and women abroad. And if you haven't been catching up with this cat or if you're not familiar with him, apparently Austin Holloman, this young brother who's by, who, by the way, he's 23 years old. He moved to Brazil. He packed his bags up, said, I'm done with these American women. I've been telling y'all this. I'm, I've been a leader of this passport bro lifestyle and I'm packing my shit up and I'm moving to Brazil. And that's exactly what he did. He moved to Brazil and he was up and running with his content on showing how great Brazilian women are in comparison to American women. And it backfired. It backfired so much that he actually had to run up out of Brazil. Literally, this man ran his ass to the airport and now he's in Thailand. Can't make this shit up. Can't make it up. And I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it because... You know, a lot of passport bros felt some kind of way about my video when I was just kind of, you know, warning. I was warning black men, not not warning them because I felt as though these countries were dangerous, but that their intentions were not the best intentions. Because let's just be honest. I'm not simply putting all passport bros of uh, uh, brothers who like to identify as passport bros i'm not putting them all in one box i'm not generalizing and saying look all passport bros are engaging in sexual tourism when they go to these countries i just put two and two together the countries that they're bigging up happens to have very high sex tourism now i'm not implying that black men who even call themselves passport bros or going to these countries for sex tourism. But I'm saying that there is a large percentage or it's a common percentage of black men who consider themselves passport bros that are going to these countries and engaging in sex tourism. That's what I said. I think that's a I think that's a fair assessment to make, especially when they promote it as such. Or not necessarily promoting, yes, yeah, so I'm in the sex tourist industry. This is why I'm going here for. But it damn sure looks like that. And Austin Holloman, I can't say for sure whether he was doing that, but it damn sure looked like a duck. So it was quacking like a damn duck. And he paid the ultimate price for it. I'm not gloating about it. I'm not gleaning glean about it. The man um, alleged that he was receiving death threats for it. You know, um, I don't know if he was necessarily receiving death threats. I mean, he never put anything up where he was receiving death threats. He was in, in fact, it was a sister, a Afro-Brazilian sister, who's a very popular, uh, you know, feminist. She's really kicking off the modern feminist movement. Uh, not kicking off. I apologize for that, my Brazilian peoples. But she's really in the forefront of the um, Afro-Brazilian women feminist movement or the afro brazilian feminist movement because there's also um afro brazilian men who are also involved in the feminist movement in brazil but she's one of the faces one of the, one of the more popular faces in brazil right now and she goes by the name of stephanie hibeto i think i'm saying that i probably butchered the last name but let's just say stephanie r shouts out to stephanie r shouts out to my afro brazilian brothers and sisters you know but she really kicked it off as far as basically getting Austin Holloman the hell up out of here because she said, look, this shit looks like sex tourism. And not only that, and I'm because I'm really going to I'm really going to drill into why these passport bros are problematic. And I'm not suggesting again, I'm not saying every brother who considers themselves a passport bro is problematic. But if you call yourself a passport bro, but you know for a fact that you're not in it for the same reasons that an Austin Holloman or some of these other cats are in it, y'all should be just as furious and y'all should be calling out these cats as well because it's making y'all look bad as well. But she pretty much said, look, this man is out here promoting sex tourism 
And if he's not promoting sex tourism, he's depicting black Brazilian women or Brazilian women in general like a stereotype. He's he's depicting them no different than the European men who we all can consider to be problematic when it comes to how they objectify women in foreign countries. Because he's fetishizing, fetishizing these women. He's objectifying these women. Definitely so. And I'm going to explain to you why he's objectifying these women, why he's no different than the European men and why so many other passport bros are no different than, and I'm going to say it, they're no different than the colonizers, the slave masters that created these countries. Because you have to understand, to understand why it is problematic to fall into the category of objectifier, to come at these countries predominantly for the women. Let, let, you know what? Let's go back to that. Because why did Austin Holloman pack up and move to Brazil in the first place? He moved to Brazil largely in, in part because, and when I say largely, this is, this, this is out of his own mouth, largely in part because of women. This is why this man moved to Brazil because of a woman. Whether it was permanently or just... Hey, I'm just going to be here for a couple of months or a couple of weeks. He's still up and left because of women. That was his primary goal to go to Brazil. And look, if you're a single man and shit, even if you, well, if you're a single man, let's just put it to you like that. I'm not sitting up here judging you based off the kind of women you would like to talk to, you know, but I do feel like it's a little disingenuous when you go to these countries in response to how you feel about modern women in, in the West because you're generalizing women in the West while bigging up and generalizing women in Brazil. And that's a problem that I have. And I'm going to tell you why. But this is why he moved to Brazil. And the problem with that is he generalized Brazilian women. He didn't get to know th these countries that he was going to because he was only in it for sex. He was only in it to objectify women and, and to understand the history of objectification of Brazilian women in this world. You have to go back to slavery. You have to go back to slavery. But when you see how the world promotes Brazilian women and, and women in Latin countries, specifically Latin countries in Southeast Asian countries, a lot of times it stems from a colonist perspective. It, stem, it, has, it has colonial roots in them. So let me break it down to you in layman's term. But during the transatlantic slave trade, when these colonies were being created by Portuguese men, specifically to, or, or specific to Brazil, we're going to talk about Brazil. But when these Portuguese men colonized what we now know today as Brazil, they outnumbered women by and large. It wasn't it wasn't like the British colonies or some of the other colonies that would later become the Caribbean countries in North America or some of the countries in North America where there were a little bit more women in those colonies or that travel abroad in these colonies. Whereas in what we now know today as Brazil, that was different. So because of the low numbers of Portuguese women in these colonies, Portuguese men and other European men by and large reverted to or took it upon themselves to rape indigenous women and enslaved African women. This is a fact. I mean, and they went so, so damn hard in engaging in non-consensual sex or just call it for what it is, rape, the R word. Why am, I, why am I even saying the R word? But, right. but they engaged so much into the activity where they eventually would build a caste system where you would have um, different groups of people based on their ethnic group or, or what they were mixed with. So you would have uh, mestizos, right? So you would have uh, black and white, a mixture of black and white, and they would create a society within itself or a society within a society. Or then you would have indigenous and white, or you would have black and indigenous and white. And that would create a caste system that would just, you know, further evolve into what we now have today 
as far as Brazil. And that's not even getting into what would later happen, which is the um, push for whitening Brazil and basically the hierarchy of Brazil pretty much uh, promoting white Europeans, white Europeans to come to Brazil and whiten the country, marry a Brazilian woman, this, that, and the third against so a lot of times against their will and whiten the country up, right? Erase the blackness of the cult of the country, erase the indigenous of the country. And now what you have, and actually this has been going on for a couple of decades now in Brazil, you're seeing this mass push for feminism, this Afro Brazilian feminist movement. I mean, it's been, I mean, it's been really bubbling right now. And that's a, that's a response to decades and generations of objectification, misogyny, rape culture, just anything you could think of discriminatory acts, violence against women and specifically Afro Afro Brazilian women. And I haven't even got to the basically making Afro Brazilian women invisible unless it involves prostitution, the sex tourism industry. Right. So this is what you're dealing with in Brazil. And you're, you're seeing the emergence of that movement pop. You're seeing the emergence of Afro Brazilian feminism again, supported by black men and black women in Brazil. So this sister, Stephanie R, is a popular figure in today's Afro black feminist movement in Brazil. Rightfully so. So when she sees this black American man who is considered a gringo, a gringo, when she sees this gringo, boy, if I sound cringe saying that, then to hell with it. But she's seeing this man from America come down here to Brazil and then he's putting out videos depicting Brazilian women as easy, objectified or easy sexual objects for more American men to move down here and take the women. To just use and abuse these women. No different than what? The Europeans that colonized this country and created those countries eventually this is the passport bro legacy right now y'all gotta fix y'all image he's going to another country that has a high sex tourism industry again there's ways to go about going to these countries and engaging with the local culture there's ways to go about it but if you don't have any genuine interest in these cultures and all you have interest in is the women in these countries and not only that but then you promote a certain image of these women in their countries and you're an outsider, yeah, the shit gonna look bad. It's gonna look bad anywhere. People don't take that shit lightly. People don't take that disrespect because that is seen as disrespectful. That's why he had to apologize to Brazil. But the damage was already done. The damage was already done. So instead of instead of so many passport bros getting upset and crying victim, because I see them crying victims, I see them, oh, what was me? Now they mad at Brazilian women. They mad at Brazilian women, but y'all was just bigging up Brazilian women in favor of, or y'all was just talking shit about black American women in favor of Brazilian women. Now y'all talking shit about Brazilian women. You got some clowns talking about, oh, well, y'all just lost millions of dollars. What, millions of dollars from the what, sex tourism industry? Is that what the, the t- black sex tourism industry? Is that is that what the millions of dollars Brazilian is losing? Yeah, nigga, please. Y'all don't hold yourselves accountable. This is comical. A, a lot of y'all need therapy, for real. You need you need to seek help. So, you know, Austin Holloman, this brother's 23. You know, I wasn't necessarily like I am now. Like, I'm older than him. I'm in my 30s. So, I don't think this brother's going to learn his lesson right away like he got a wake-up call no doubt that's why he again that's why he ran his ass like flojo up out of there rest in peace but the fact that he posted that video up in thailand promoting the same thing that got him in trouble in brazil he hasn't learned his lesson yet and he might have to find out the hard way like i said he, he got this one one time you don't get two more times in life to shit really hits the fan but I'm done. Okay, that's it. So don't forget to like and subscribe. And oh yeah, by the way, 
don't forget to if, if y'all want if y'all want to know how to engage with other coaches without coming off like a creep without coming off like a pervert such as austin holloman i suggest y'all look at the brother um afro brazil today or black brazil today yeah go check out his channel black brazil today and also check out a brother that goes by the name of check in effect because this brother he showcases a lot of women in other countries but you get the sense that this brother is actually just genuinely curious about other cultures and he really immerses himself in these cultures these different cultures all right that's it now i'm, I'm going for real don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs>